Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, construct a quad tree. So we're given a square matrix, maybe something like this one. So it's n by n and we actually want to convert it into a tree, but not just a regular like binary tree, actually a quad tree where every single node in the tree will have four children except of course for leaf nodes, maybe like this one, this one doesn't have any children. So in this case, our node is gonna look something like this where it will have a value. In this case, I think values are just gonna be either zero or one. It'll also have a field to indicate whether it's a leaf or not, and we'll have four pointers for each of the four children, where each of the four children will have a spot actually. And this brings us to what we're actually trying to accomplish with this grid. So given a square grid like this one, the root is not going to correspond to any of these cells. Our root node of our quad tree is not gonna be any of these cells, but the four children of each of these roots are going to correspond to a quadrant of this grid. So actually the root node can kind of be thought of as the entire grid, and then it will have a child for the top left portion of the grid. So think about it, if this is an n by n grid, how are we going to define the top left quadrant? Probably it's going to be n divided by two in height and n divided by two in width. So that's how we're gonna define the dimensions. And we'll have one for the top right, one for the bottom right, well, bottom left, and one for the bottom right. And recursively, actually, for each of these quadrants, we can break that up as well. You can see they've kind of illustrated that to us over here on the top right. You can see this one is broken up into quadrants as well. So recursively, that's what we're gonna do. For each of these squares, we're gonna recursively break it up again and again into quadrants until we can't do so anymore. Maybe we get to the individual cells and then for each of those individual cells, we actually will be able to fill in a few more of these fields. We'll be able to fill in that value. So for this grid cell, it'll be a one. For maybe this one over here, it'll be a zero. And each of these, of course, will actually be a leaf. So we'll need to set leaf to true. But there's one last shortcut we're sort of required to take, which is that, think about this quadrant over here. All of the values are one, so we probably don't need to break it up further. When we have a node, we can kind of just prune this. That's usually the word that's used which is basically to take a shortcut here and say that since all of the values here are one, we don't need to take this quadrant and actually break it up. We don't need the children. We can say that this is a leaf node and all the values are going to be one anyway. So we can just have a node like that. So taking this entire thing, the resulting tree would look something like this, where we have a root node and then each of these four quadrants, this is maybe the top left, I'll kind of color code them. Orange will be for bottom left. Red will be for bottom right. And then for top right, I'm gonna make it blue because this one actually we can break up into four more quadrants. Top left is orange, top right is white, bottom left is blue, I'll use like a purplish shade. Bottom left is blue and bottom right is purple. So this is what the tree would look like breaking this up because this one corresponds to this. We don't have to break it up any further. The way we would know that is probably by running like a loop over this portion of the grid to see that all the values are the same. So we don't need to recursively break that up any further. The last thing is just a bit of math on how we're actually gonna define these quadrants. We know that in terms of dimensions, if this is n, this whole part, then this part is gonna be n divided by two. And then when we uh, take this part and then break it up into this portion, well, that's gonna be n divided by four. So basically we'll be taking whatever value we have and dividing it by two each time to get the dimensions at least, to get the positions though, because we know that these two have the same dimensions, but the positions are different. This one, let's, uh, to, for, to keep it simple, let's define each of these quadrants based on their top left position. So for this one, it's always gonna be the origin, let's say zero, zero, but for this one over here, it's uh, going by the row and the column. The row here is gonna be the same, but the column is basically gonna be n divided by two plus 
the origin column. So it's going to be 0 plus n divided by 2. To get the origin for this guy, its column is going to be the same as the origin, but its row here is going to be the row from here plus n divided by 2. And lastly, to get the origin over here, well, the top left of this quadrant at least, we'll have to get the row of the original plus n divided by 2. And same for the column. We'll have to say column plus n divided by 2. So that's the bit of math. Now, in terms of time complexity, in the worst case, let's say the grid dimension is n. Our tree, we're going to have four nodes in the worst case every single time. And we're going to keep breaking this up recursively. Now, let's say the dimension here was n. Well, we're going to divide it by 2 every time. So here, we're going to get to n divided by 2. Down here, we're going to get to n divided by 4. And we're going to keep doing that until n is equal to 1. So the height of this is going to be log n. Now, in the worst case, we'll have like a leaf node for every single position in the grid. So the total number of leaf nodes we could have is going to be n squared. So you might think that that's the time complexity. But you also have to remember that at each level in the tree, we are iterating over the entire tree. Because think about it, when we have the original grid and then we break it up into four quadrants, we have to check this quadrant. Do they have all the same values? We have to do the same thing for this quadrant, the bottom right quadrant, and the bottom left quadrant. So we have to do that here. So the time complexity of that is also n squared. And doing the same thing at the next level, we'll have smaller quadrants, but we'll have to still do that in the worst case for every single one. So every single position in the entire grid, that will also be another n squared. So we're going to have log n levels in this tree. For each level, we're doing an n squared operation. So the overall time complexity is n squared times log n in this recursive solution. So now let's code this up. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to do this recursively. So I'm going to define a DFS. We definitely want to pass in the dimensions of our current portion of the grid. And we also want to pass in the top left coordinate. So I'm going to say row column. That's what these stand for. I'm going to pass in the top left using these two coordinates. We know our main base case is that if all the values are the same. So let's try to figure that out. I'm going to have a variable which I'm going to call all same. I'm going to set it to true initially, and then I'm going to create my nested for loop to iterate over the entire grid. It's a square grid, so it's pretty easy to iterate over. Just have to have a nested for loop going n times. And we want to know, is the top left position of our grid, of our portion of the grid that we're checking at row column coordinates, equal to the next position in this grid? We're just trying to iterate over our current portion of the grid, which is n by n. So to get the uh, coordinate of the next position, we're going to say row plus n and column plus n. So if all the values are the same, then we don't really want to do anything. But if we find any pair of values that are not the same, then we will set all same equal to false and then break out of this loop. Once we have either iterated over the entire portion of the grid or broken out of it, then we want to check if all same is still true, then that's our base case. That means we have a leaf node now. What is the value of the leaf node going to be? That's the first parameter that we pass in. It's going to be the value in our grid at the top left position because all of them are the same. And next, is it a leaf node? Yes, this is going to be a leaf node. And then we pass in the four children. They're implicitly going to be null anyway. So for a leaf node, that's what we would want. So we don't really have to explicitly say that all of them are null. We can just implicitly assume that. Now, you might be thinking, this is the base case where all of the values are the same. But what about the base case where n is equal to 1? Well, we don't have to explicitly define that case here because actually that's going to be covered by this piece of code anyway. So we don't have to worry about that. This is our only base case. We can think about it like that at least. So otherwise, we know n is not equal to 1 and all of the uh, coordinates are not the same value. So we're going to set n equal to n divided by 2, integer division in Python. And then we want to recursively run DFS for each of the four children nodes. So for the top left, we're going to run DFS. 
we're going to pass in our new n value that we just computed over here. And we're going to pass in the row and column since it's top left, it's going to have the same top left coordinate as the one that we're currently at. But I'm going to copy and paste this because now we're going to get to top right, which is going to be a bit different. The row is going to be the same for the top right portion, but for column, we're going to add to it the new n value that we just computed, which is half the length of the previous n value. So this will give us the top right coordinate. So this will give us the top left coordinate of the top right portion of the grid. Now I'm going to copy and paste this and do it for the bottom right and bottom left. So just to rename these now bottom left is going to be the column staying the same, but the row is going to be different. We have to add n to it. We're going to go half that distance and bottom right is going to actually be updating both of the row and the column. So we already have column plus n and for row, we're going to say row plus n. Now we have the result of the four children, which we need because now we're going to create a node for the current coordinate that we're at. And we know it's not a leaf node. So the value that we give it doesn't really matter. I'm going to give it a zero. You could give it a null if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. And for is leaf, I'm going to say false. We know it's definitely not a leaf because it has four children. And these are the four children of that node. So let's pass them in top left, top right bottom left and bottom right. Make sure you pass them in in the same order that they have defined up here. And this newly constructed node is exactly what we're going to return. So let's do that. And now outside of this DFS, we need to actually call the DFS. And what we're going to pass in for n is, of course, going to be the dimension of the grid. And for row column, we're just going to start at the origin, which is 0, 0. That's going to be our top left coordinate. So now let's take this and run it to make sure that it works. Oh, whoops, I had a very dumb typo. Sorry about that here. We're not adding N, we're adding the I and J. That's the whole reason that we're iterating over the grid because we want each of those coordinates. I'm really sorry if this was confusing. Now that we've run it, you can see that yes, it does work and it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.